Hi guys, Mr. Bullock, and here's board problem 30. I'm doing this after a final, so the kids are done with the final, so you're going to hear some chatter in the background. Uh, okay, so the following is a histogram of test scores. Which of the following are true statements? And we have this histogram over here. I see some 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, and so, uh, so here's number one. The median score was 75. Okay, so if you count how many scores there are in here, I count 13, 13 little boxes. So the median would cut it in half, so it would be about the seventh one. So here's two, four, six. So the seventh one's over here. The median's probably 85, so it's not choice one. Okay, number two says if 90 and above was an, was an A, most students received an A. Well, that's deceptive, you guys, because uh, it looks like most students, but here, five students received an A, eight students didn't receive an A. So not most students received an A. Most students received something other than an A. So it's not two. Okay, more students scored below 70 than 90, than above 90. Well, below 70, there's four. Above 90, there's five. So that's not true either. So it's choice E. None of them are true. Okay, here's a description of what I just said right there. You can pause and read that if you want. Okay, you're going to need to get a coin out soon. I'm going to ask you to flip some coins, you guys. So uh, this is thinking about probability, uh, thinking about randomness with the use of probability. Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys to pause it right here after you toss a coin ten times and record what you come up with, how many heads and how many tails. So pause it right here. Pause it right here. Pause it right here. And toss your coin ten times and then come back and turn it back on. Okay? All right, so chance behavior is unpredictable in the beginning, but has a regular and very predictable pattern in the long run. If we took a tally of everybody in the class on their coin flips, it would come closer to 50-50. Some of you guys probably got 50-50, but most of you guys probably didn't. Some of you guys got more tails, some of you guys got more heads. But if we put them all together, it would come closer to 50 50-50. Okay, so now I want you to look at the example 6.1 on page 331. Uh, okay, and here it is right here. This uh, graph is kind of hard to uh, explain. I'll see if I can explain it. So uh, when you toss a coin, there are only two possible outcomes, heads or tails. So figure 6.1 shows the result of tossing a coin a thousand times. For each number of tosses from 1 to 1,000, we have plotted the proportion of heads that they got. So here's the proportion of heads over here. So the first coin toss was a heads. So that was this guy right here. So that was 100% on the first coin toss got a head. Okay, that's why it's up here at 1. 100%. The second coin toss was a tail. So down here, here's the second coin toss. It dropped the number of heads to 50%. This is the line 50% right here. And then it said uh, the next three tosses gave a tail followed by two heads. So here's a, uh, so it says after the first five tosses, we got three heads out of five or 60%. So here's the first five tosses. If you go straight up, it takes me over to 60%. Okay? And so the more tosses you get, the more it starts hovering around the 50% mark uh, of how many heads came up, okay? So the more you did. And then check this out. You guys will be excited with this. Uh, anyway, so the proportion of tosses that, that's produced heads is quite variable at first, but it gets closer to 50%. That's what that says right there. Okay, this is the basis for idea of probability. And um, random behavior emerges only in the long run so after thousands and thousands and thousands of tosses and check this out how exciting so here's some coin tossers this is example 62 on page 332 okay the french naturalist count buffon what a name huh count uh, tossed a coin 4,040 times. Now remember, this was back in the 1700s where they had no TV, they had no computers, had no iPhones, where they had nothing else to do but toss coins. So how exciting, huh? So he tossed a coin and uh, 4,040 times, and this many heads came up, 2048. So when you take 2048 divided by 4040, about almost 50%, you guys, not quite 50%, but pretty darn close. <coughs> Excuse me. Around 1900, the English statistician Carl Pearson heroically tossed a coin 24,000 times. What a hero, huh? And he got 12,012 heads, and his proportion came even closer to 50%. Check that out. Isn't that exciting? What a hero. Okay, and then while imprisoned in the German, uh, by the Germans in World War II, the South African mathematician John Kirok tossed a coin 10,000 times. I suppose while you're in prison, that's all you have to do. 
Uh, and his result came up 5,067, and his proportion came out uh, uh, close to 50%. Okay, none of them got exactly 50%. So let's try all three together. Let's see if that does anything. So if we add them all up, we get about um, uh, close to 50%. Actually, the Carl Pearson was even closer. But anyways, the more you do it, the more closer you should get to that. Okay, the terms random and probability occur in the very long series of repetitions. You must have a long series of independent trials. Okay, uh, there is a infinite areas of random and probability use. So some examples are <clears throat> are casinos, cars, roulette wheels, and all of these are some examples of uh, you know like when I go to Thunder Valley, I like to call it Thunder Screw You because I get screwed all the time there. Uh, every now and then I win, you know, and and it, it, it was they love it when they get winners, you know, that that John Bullock uh, received uh, ten thousand dollars in whatever some some uh, slot machine, and and they would post it on something and advertise it because that means whoever won that ten thousand dollars in there, that means they had so many others, thousands of others that got screwed infinitely many more times. So I mean they don't make those big old casinos with uh, paying out a bunch of winners. They, they, they basically steal your money because you're a bunch of losers, okay? Uh, and that's it for this one here.